This video is going to focus on reverse engineering a 1972 Honda 70 side plate cover from a scanned model using the tools that now come in 2020 that allow you to work right off the mesh and really reverse engineer semi by tracing the model out and uh, you know looking at what the scanned model is. I did a previous video that I encourage you to watch on Geomagic for SolidWorks, uh, working with scan models that show an add-in that really allow you to reverse the top surface of this in more of an exact fashion. But with this one, we're going to focus on uh, the tools that come in 2020 and do a little comparison as I go along. So I hope you enjoy the video on reverse engineering a side plate cover in side of 2020. So let's take a look at how we do this in 2020. I've already loaded this in 2020 because it would take about a minute, a little over a minute to open this file. But you go in and you open it using the new mesh tools in 2020 without anything turned on. You can click the same point cloud file. Sometimes you want to check your options. It won't turn it into a solid because it was a terrible scan. It'll turn it into a surface body now, though, and that's what's new in 2020. So the benefit of that is I have surfaces after I open it. So that allows me to go in and do the same similar things that I did inside of Geomagic as far as sketching a spline on the surface, selecting the point command while you're sketching on a surface, and then go in and constrain it to the surface. So again, in 2020, by opening it as a mesh file, it opens it as a surface file, which is a big benefit. If I use the old scan to 3D tools to open this model, I could open it, but it would never turn these surfaces into a true surface that SolidWorks would see, or I should say, turn the mesh into a SolidWorks surface. So again, I'm continuing to just sketch in 3D, and I'm doing this all in one 3D sketch command, and I'm just trying to find the vertice that's at the top, but it's a little tough to do because you're, you're stuck with the auto surface that SolidWorks brought in. There's no real way to tell it you want more mesh or, or you know, vertice points right where these facets come together. You are virtually stuck with what SOLIDWORKS brings in. In Geomagic, you could really surface the file and tell it that you want more exactness out of the file, and it'll create more vertices in there if it didn't put a vertice where you need it. All these are relatively close enough, probably within the half millimeter range that I really need it to be for what it is. So from here, I'm going to go in and do the same thing. I'm going to create a sketch on those three points. And again, now I'm already clicking the OK button twice because everything that I'm doing in SolidWorks has just been slowed down because of these meshed surfaces that were brought in. And you know that there is a lot of meshed surfaces brought in rather than just a top and bottom. So it saw some extraneous surfaces that are left over and they're probably just in the middle of the part. I'm not going to go in there and clean them up and spend cleanup time. I'm just going to offset a plane, eyeball it like I did when using Geomagic, and now I'm just going to go in on this new plane and, and sketch rather than doing the converted entities like I did in Geomagic. I did that because I accidentally sketched it on the wrong plane. But now let's go in and take a look at just tracing over it. Again, this is pretty much doing the arcs and lining arcs up with the part. So I'm just going to eyeball some arcs. I'm holding down the control key right now so it doesn't inference because it's trying to inference and stick onto the mesh. And I'm really just using the mesh pretty much like a pitcher at this point where I'm just trying to trace over it and get eyeball accuracy on this. After all, it is an XL 70 1974 side plate. So really just trying to reverse engineer this. 
make some tangent arcs here. I actually want to pull this one out a little bit first because this is the side plate that's been cut out for a pipe on this side that was modified and I really want to make it with the full side plate. I'm going to mirror it for the other side of the bike. I'm missing both side plates or missing one side plate and have this right side plate that I scanned in. So after doing these tangent arcs, it doesn't always get the tangency on the end of the arc, so I'm going to go around and click the points. It's the quickest way to make arcs tangent is just get the point between them and tell it you want to make it tangent. And from there, if I go in and nudge the arcs around, make sure it really is the six arcs that I sketched. It really does look pretty much like the shape. This one's a little tight. I might have to loosen it up later, but I think my other round's a little bigger on the other model, but we'll get back into that in a little bit, if needed. So from here, all I'm really doing is using the extrude commands like I did in SolidWorks. With the GeoMagic, I'm extruding this first section up, and I'm going to throw some draft on there and eyeball the height they use the same height as I used in my previous model now I'll go try to put some draft on it I believe I had 12 or 13 degrees looks good we'll go ahead and commit to that Now, as you see, again, everything starts dragging like I have a very large model in SolidWorks. I'll even go in and just select the surfaces and say, hey, let's suppress this to make the model go faster. But look what happens. It suppresses everything. I've got these parent-child relationships that are just a little gummy. So back to waiting for the model to appear because it's just solid works and it takes a while to bring everything back now let's wait for it and hopefully everything will come back here there we go sometimes we're wondering oh there it is Woo! got it back and again that's what happens when you're just using the stuff that was imported and this is not a very big imported model. I've worked with ones that are 20 times this size in Geomagic's Instant, where I couldn't even bring it in in SolidWorks. So again, here's some of the extraneous, the extraneous data in here that's I don't really need in the model, and I'm really just trying to work with the surface that I want. You know, suppressing, hiding, and this is the rabbit hole you go down when you're just using SolidWorks. And the new import tools is you got to go through this. Let me go through and turn these back on or actually go in and unsuppress them. They should be in here. So, yeah, let me go and suppress them. And then we'll be able to finish up the model. But again, everything that I do starts taking time because I really can't suppress what I need to. I can hide it, but that's really not taking it out of memory. So I will hide it when I need to here in a little bit. Now that I realize I cannot suppress it without these problems in here. So let me offset this surface. Just really doing the same thing I did in my last model. And I forget whether I offset that four or five, but let's just extrude that up. Kind of on eyeball the extrusion. Kind of looks good. Because what I'm going to do here is use an innovative feature called the dome command to kind of fake out that dome. That's what I'm going to have to do. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a way that I can go in and tell SolidWorks that I want to use the top of this surface in here, particularly with that holy surface scan and the sticker that's also showing up in the scan. 
So really what I want to do from here is just use the dome command to model the part. So I'm going to go in and again, just maybe I can hide what I need to here without it affecting the model. So it lets me hide my corner over in the right looks a little sharp. So might have to fix that, but let's just see. Let's go in and throw a round on here. I'm going to go try to throw the same round with the same size on it that I did in my last model, and I can see that my corner needs to be a little more rounded, so let me go in and do that. It's not that sharp in my other model. I eyeballed the tangency, so let me go back in and fix the tangency. Hopefully it won't take a long time to regenerate these things that have already been made. That should be a little smoother. Let's go with it. And let's pop that asymmetrical round back on and change it to have the right dimensions. If it goes to the wrong side, you might want to flip the side that it's on. This one looks like it's good, so I'm going to go ahead and pump that out. Again, if you flip the side and it doesn't work, then you need a different value. Now I'll make this a little more varied here. Let's maybe make that one. 19, 20, it's a pretty flexible round. That's, can I change this at all, or is it going to fail in that? So I'm pretty much stuck with about the same dimensions I had on my other one. As far as making a continuous curvature asymmetrical round, looks pretty good. But when we look at the model, it's flat on top. And again, using the mesh inside of 2020, there really is no way to duplicate that surface on top. So I really have to fake it. Thank goodness we have a good dome command. It's still not going to give me anything close to what they made in 1974 on the Honda, but I can get a little tricky here with the dome command. Set the dome to something a little less bubbly. And with this set, to somewhere close. I just kind of eyeballing that in since I don't have the mesh. It doesn't really look that bad for a quick reverse engineer job that doesn't have to be exact if it didn't have to be. So you can see it's really lost some of that curvy, wervy flair that the designers, even back in 1974, were able to put on an XL70. So now it's just cleaning up some of the edges so I can come in and put a nice shell on there. And it doesn't really look like it likes that edge, probably because my round's still a little too sharp. So let me go in. Really seems like everything that you do with the Geomagic model kind of works better especially when you're not using stuff like the dome command in there. So in this case, I'm really just going to go to a more advanced round, I think, and uh, do a face round or something in here because this doesn't really seem to be working even. Let's see if I can put a smaller one in. Yeah, it's goobered up even with the smaller one. Let me go put a face round in tell it what faces I want to use. More than likely, this will put a nice blending around in there that I can go back up to 4 millimeters with, like on my other model. It's nice to see when the round command works with just a edge round, though. Putting the dome on there probably makes the model a little less stable, and you know, you're going down this sculpturing modeling technique versus a hybrid modeling technique that let me hybrid that surface in 
with the replace command, where this model, I really couldn't do that. So I'm kind of stuck with these traditional features, but it is a different way to do it. And if you only have SolidWorks 2020, at least you have the ability to bring in the mesh and work with it. Where before, even our scan to 3D tools really wouldn't let me do much with that mesh. I could probably get some planes in there and sketch around it and end up with something very similar to this, but it would be very difficult to get the first three points on where I wanted it to using older tools and SolidWorks. So really nice to see that they've put this surface editing on surface meshes that you bring in and it kind of creating a surface that's usable so we can use these older tools to kind of trace over a part and try to reverse engineer it. Now again, this surface is not going to be anywhere close where my other surface was really right on. This one is just going to be faked. But if we turn back on the original surfaces, and interestingly enough, I can use the compare command which really doesn't compare to the geomagic deviation command. This one for comparing geometry, it will really just give me some what's the same, what's different, where I need to add or where do I need to uh, remove geometry to make it so. So it's really nothing close to the deviation command. Actually, I'll be surprised if it even really even finishes inside of here, but let's just see with the compare command if we can get it to kick us out anything. So again, just comparing these two as this finishes up, the first one using Geomagic's add-in really with the requirement of wanting to reverse engineer that surface that was created in 1974 that's worthy and curvy than in more than one direction and definitely not domed and comparing that to utilizing just SolidWorks 2020 to bring in the mesh and then use older techniques to model off the part. And in here, you can kind of see this is my comparable or same type surfaces. And I can include, I guess if I go in and turn off this mesh, you'll be able to see a little bit more. Let me hide it. and Hopefully everything stays there. And you can see that's kind of the included, but that's just where my model goes over it, you can see what it's doing as a Boolean operation to show the compare. So that's where I've got it the same. Can't really tell where I've got pieces that that make up my real mesh model versus my other model. And last but not least, we do have a deviation comparing tool, much like the one in Geomagic for SolidWorks. Under the evaluate command, there is a body compare. The body compare allows me to select the mesh that I brought in using the new mesh tools and then the body that I modeled. Now in this case, since I really traced over the scan model, it's not near as nice as my reverse engineered model that I did in the previous video for Geomagic for SolidWorks working with scan models. I highly encourage you to watch that because the add-in is really nice to get more of an exact replication. But you can see I have the ability to do a compare body with the new deviation type analysis inside of SolidWorks. Thanks for watching.